Hi, welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Lisa Martin. We've got James Winia here with me, the Director of Product Management at Dell. We're going to be talking about modern data center networks. Jim, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lisa. Great to be here. So let's talk about this. We've had such so many dynamics going on in the last 15, 16 months, I've lost count. A lot of dynamics in play that are contributing to IT complexity. There's new sources of data. We had this massive shift to work from home, work from anywhere that's now kind of this, this hybrid uh, environment. Talk to me about some of the core requirements of a modern network infrastructure that organizations need to deploy. Absolutely, and, and thanks for, for teeing that up. Uh, the modern networking requirements these days, uh, so many, many people have moved home. And um, so as a result, then the infrastructure back, you know, back on the farm, uh, back back in the data center have to be, you know, beefier. They have to, you have to have more capacity, you have to be able to handle more scaling operations. And so uh, things like, you know, the ability to, you know, radically increase your, your backbone, um, just by swapping in, you know, some some different transceivers, possibly some different switches to support those faster transceivers, allow for us to multiply that bandwidth very quickly. So that's been a, a big result of, of what we um, have seen coming out of uh, all this the, the COVID madness. Yeah, madness is a great description for it. And there's going to be that hybrid as we go forward. There's going to be that that need to, for any industry, I imagine, to enable work from anywhere. But talk to me about where customers are from a speed perspective, 100 gig, that's really mature at this point. Is that where most businesses are? And then what's the next step from there? Another great question. Uh, I mean, 100 gig is pretty much the de facto standard at this point. It is uh, has really become very cost uh, competitive uh, and very stable. I mean, we've really been shipping you know, QSFP 28, the, the latest 100 gig, you know, for five years, and it's it has become the de facto standard uh, for, for many, many different scenarios. As we move forward though, of course, uh, we just need to move more data is what it comes down to. And so uh, the next logical jump from 100 is 400. And so um, 400 started rolling out about the time that COVID came on, a couple months before that. And so, um, honestly, there was a, a slight kind of delay in the industry as uh, COVID come, made everybody take a step back and say, whoa, hold on. Uh, but now it's really come back in full force. So what does an organization, and, and we'll kind of just leave this as any industry, need to do to be able to prepare to go from 100 to 400? Because as you mentioned, you know, the data sources aren't diminishing. It's only going to continue to increase. Absolutely. And so um, one of the things is to make sure that the, the backbone infrastructure can handle 400 gig. Uh, ironically enough, the, the actual optical cable, cable trunks, those um, are pretty much the same. And so if you were running single mode fiber to go a long distance, you would use that same cable. So you don't have to rip out all your cable infrastructure. What you have to look at, look at closely is when you plug that transceiver into a switch, um, it, you know, what is it capable of, of running at? In older days, that would, was probably 100 gig. Now you have a 400 gig. So you have to make sure that you have just the right hardware to go with that. And then as you go down down the chain, down the stack rather, you know, from those the switch from the core to the switch all the way to your server, you know, on the servers we see a lot of interest in 100 gig, uh, even up to 200 gig today. And so um, it's the same discussion. You know, taking a close look at on your NIC or your adapter, uh, what is it rated at? Is it going to be able to handle uh, a faster speed? So it's not a rip and replace. Can you give us an idea of the migration path that a customer would take and how Dell would facilitate that? Absolutely. And so we have some great customers who have really stepped out in different different ways. You have the uh, kind of the greenfield customers who they're building out a, a whole additional data center, say, and so they would just from that from the ground up replace it with the latest and greatest equipment that's just already ready to go. Uh, other customers that are just extending. Uh, maybe they're um, you know tapping a couple of data centers together and replacing you know those 100 gig links to aggregate them with 400 gig links, uh, and then you know they would maybe migrate uh, adding in an additional 400 gig links down through the, the stack as it makes sense. Um, so you know Ethernet is Ethernet, right? Whether you have 100 gig on one side, one link, 400 gig on another link, it all plugs and plays nicely, and so you don't have to 
you know, have this big step where you have a forklift, everything out, and then move all new equipment in. It's as it makes sense. As organizations have pivoted multiple times in the last 15, 16 months, as we've all seen, and there will continue to be that. I mentioned there's this sort of work from anywhere hybrid model. What are some of the benefits that a, a business could expect going from 100 gig to 400 besides just quadrupling the speed? Talk to me about some of the business impact that can be made here. So business impact is, is uh, can be tremendous. Um, Certainly the, the capacity is the, the biggest one that, that jumps out at us here uh, as we can just you know, combine more, add on more services. Um, another area where we see this impact and which again boils down to um, capacity is you know, IOT and edge. You know, we have these new edge devices coming left and right. I mean, every time you turn around in the consumer world, there's some new thing that we never thought was possible or we thought was 20 years down the road and well, there it is. Uh, all of those, cute little gadgets are just creating these streams of data. Okay, so you just have so much more data that has to be processed. And so some of that gets processed at the edge and that's a that's a kind of a cool new thing, um, but you still have more data that has to come up, come back to back to the home base where either for storage or for analytics or for, you know, number crunching. And so you, you have to be able to manage that, you know, bigger, fatter pipes going long distances, going short distances, going just in the same rack. Have you noticed, Jim, in the last year or so, any industries in particular that are really prime candidates for this upgrade? As you mentioned, IoT, the explosion at the edge, sensors, sensors everywhere. Any industries that you saw that really are benefiting from doing this migration? Well, certainly the the hyperscalers, you know, the uh, the, the big uh, companies that you know we all do social networking on. You know, they're just moving around just piles of data and that's everyone's you know working from home and so they have a little little extra time to do the, the clicking and, and, uh, and searching and stuff and so that and as well as entertainment you know from home people are just they're just using it more bandwidth and so the the tier one tier two uh providers uh, certainly uh, we've seen just tremendous interest and growth as they have stepped out and adopted Jim, can we do a double click now on some deployment options and capabilities, maybe helping us understand it by industry segment? Uh, yes, absolutely. And so some of the segments that we've been working closely with over the last 18 months here is like cloud service providers. Also large enterprise um, companies who have you know, large data centers. And then thirdly, uh, federal is, uh, is moving along very quickly. You know, federal's got with all the security stuff that's been in the news of late, you know, they have more calculation and uh, uh, just data transfer needs than ever. And so, you know, those are a couple of good ones. Got it. Yeah. Ransomware is now, unfortunately, one of those common household yes. words as is yes. pandemic and Pfizer, right? Talk to me about where automation comes into play as organizations look to migrate, to become faster, to be able to manage more data coming in faster from more sources. Where does automation factor in the mix? One of my favorite questions actually, because the, in the networking industry, uh, it has changed so much in the last eh, five years. It used to be that, you know, when you were talking about large data centers and, and just massive amounts of data, that the entire discussion revolved around these large modular chassis. And, uh, the reality is that nowadays, yeah, large monster chassis still exist and they have they have a place, but they're they're not mandatory in all circumstances. And one of the big changes is that you can get you know building blocks that you know push out tremendous tremendous amounts of data you know within a single box, and you can use like a class structure that allows you to do more data safer because you have higher availability than, than these really expensive modular chassis. And so uh, when you come with kind of more switches, the reality is that now you have a, a bigger automation requirement. And so the tools to be able to automatically set that up, automatically maintain it, automatically monitor it, those are critical. Uh, and especially when we're talking about, you know, high capacity uh, environments where, you know, you you have millions of people watching watching the the video being being on the screen right now. You know it, it it better be there no matter what blip happens on the on the back end. Yep, there's always that demanding consumer. No matter what you do, what about automating 
day one and day two operations, how does it play into managing this infrastructure, this modern data network infrastructure, both on-prem and in the cloud? Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, so I work for Dell and I forgot to mention up front, I apologize. The, the, uh, I, I'm a, a Dell employee, but I'm actually speaking from my opinion. I'm not representing Dell in terms of their view, viewpoint of all of these things we're talking about today. But the um, one of the big things is that you know as we have gone from those modular chassis to more individual uh, units to get the this this cleaner deployment, um, the day one has to do with how do you design that? You know how do you when you have more fiber cables, you know connecting things up? How do you make sure that you don't Oops, plug one into the wrong place. And so tools uh, such as, you know, in Dell, we have tools like the Fabric Design Center that automatically generate all of those uh, wiring diagrams for you, all of the, um, the testing. When you plug it in for the first time, it actually ver verifies that everything's clean. And then day two is, you know, monitoring, you know, what's happening. Are, um, are you getting issues, subtle issues that are, are maybe not noticed, but are building up, you know? Um, and so things like the, the Smart Fabric Director uh, can allow us to monitor the, those types, types of things and make recommendations for, hey, there's something happening we need to be aware of and watch it, or here's some corrective action. Uh, and so those kinds of tools really are the lifeblood to make sure that uh, you know, the team doesn't just get overwhelmed. And the reality is, and we all know, you know as, as time goes on, we need, we're, we're given the opportunity to have fewer people working on you know, maintaining stuff. And so you need more equipment, it's more complex, but you have less, less number of, of eyes on what's going on. And so the tools just have to be locked in. So tools you mentioned, what about operating systems? Anything that you would recommend that customers look into? That's another great question. So operating systems are, uh, have changed, you know, if you look back on the server world, you go back eh, 20, 25 years ago, every, every server, server company, you know, they made their own CPU, they made their own operating system, you know, and then it evolved so that there was, you know, now you buy a CPU from either like maybe Intel, maybe AMD, um, but it's not like Dell goes out and makes its own CPU. You know, we buy from, from other, other um, established leaders. Uh, when it comes to operating systems on the server side, the same thing happened. Well, the networking world has been catching up for quite a while. And so, you know, four years ago, we started talking about open networking and the fact that there are options. You're not locked into just what is our primary operating system. And so uh, there are open source operating systems that you can run. There are you know, things like Sonic, which has just really been taking the, the networking world by storm. And, uh, and so we certainly support Dell Enterprise Sonic on our platforms. And um, that is another fantastic option. Excellent. Last question, Jim, for you. If you had a crystal ball, given the dynamics of the world today and how quickly things are changing and how organizations need to be competitive, what are some of the things that you think we're going to see in the networking world in the next 12 to 18 months? Well, I, it doesn't take a whole lot of a crystal ball. <laughs> we just follow the standards bodies. You know, we see that, you know, 400 gig has really come on strong and Honestly, we played catch up in that industry, having all of the optics that we needed. You know, we needed all the, the breakout optics to go from 400 to four by 100. You know, and those took, took a good, well, six to eight months before those really came on board. And so now we're finally at the place where we're in a good place. Uh, but the next thing clearly is everything doubles. And so now we will jump to 800 gig. So over the same infrastructure. And so that's, um, Again, everything doubles, and then there's a lot of talk about well, what happens after that? Well, then you go everything from 800 to 1.6 T, you know, over that same infrastructure, and so it's just kind of mind-boggling capacity. But you know, it's coming at us like a freight train. It is like a freight train. We'll say a, a good freight train. Jim, thank you so much for joining me on the Cube today, talking to me about modern data center networks, what's going on there, the opportunities for businesses in any industry to take advantage of the latest and greatest. We appreciate your time. You bet. Thank you for inviting me. For Jim Winya, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this Cube Conversation.